Okay, welcome to lesson two. Lesson two, uh, cataracts, tubes and x-ray tubes. Now effectively an x-ray tube is a type of cataract tube and they both use electrons. So it's kind of following on from Thomson and dealing with how Thomson discovered the uh, electron and so on. So first of all, a cathode ray tube. Now, what is a cathode ray tube? Very simple. It's effectively the same as the fluorescent tube that you have at home. Okay, so it was traditionally a, just two plates, okay, a negative plate and a positive plate. So the negative plate effectively connects to the negative end of a power supply and the positive plate to the positive end of a power supply with the, the famous glass envelope, okay tube okay and we have a vacuum or a partial vacuum let's say partial vacuum okay and what used to happen was they what they did was they started trying to send electricity through this and they expected nothing to happen because there was a gap between this place and this place so the circuit wasn't complete as you remember from your junior cert okay however if there was a partial vacuum and depending on what gas was in there they used to see a beam of a beam of par a beam just a beam but you notice particles okay a beam so what they decided was okay the beam is coming from the cathode okay the negative okay the negative is called the cathode the negative electrode and the positive electrode is called the anode so this beam was coming from the cathode the rays were coming from the cathode so we call them cathode rays they didn't know what they were they didn't know that they were particles that we know now okay so this is your cathode ray tube okay the simplest version of a cathode ray tube now what was used up to 15 years ago was a more sophisticated cathode ray tube and we'll draw what that was. Now when I talk about it was 15 years ago, if you talk to your parents, you talk about your TVs and so on, their monitors, you used to have a, we didn't have flat screen TVs as we have now, our flat screen monitors, we used to have these TVs monitors that we should have big back on them, okay, and the back was the cathode ray tube. So cathode ray tubes were a hugely important uh, piece of uh, technology up to, up to the advent of uh, flat screen TVs uh, and monitors in the last 10 or 15 years when you were born okay so what we have here is okay so this is the more sophisticated version okay so we have okay in this case we need to get electrons okay so what they do did was to get electrons they had a low voltage supply of over here okay right so it's a very simple circuit low voltage supply and in this there was a filament okay so this is a filament and the filament got hot, okay, that's about the filament of a bulb, okay, so low voltage. Okay, we'll have a look at this in, the, in, our, in our notes later. Okay, filament got hot. Now, what happens when a filament gets hot? The filament is a metal, okay, and a metal actually has loads of electrons that are pretty free, okay, they're not really part of the bonds, they're not really bonded too much, they're pretty free. And it's these electrons that move when you, when you send a current through it, when you get your electric current, and these electrons are always kind of available to escape the metal if you give them a bit of energy. One way of giving them energy is heating, okay, and the electrons get emitted if you heat them, they get energy, they get enough kinetic energy to escape from the surface, and that's called thermionic emission, thermionic, term as in thermometer, uh, heating, so it's with heating, thermionic emission, so emission of electrons due to heating, okay, so that's thermionic emission. Right, okay, but what we, the way we've just set up here is we have the filament that gets hot, and beside the filament, okay, so the filament is causing the heating, we put in a cathode. So we've got a cathode here. So if the filament gets hot, the cathode gets hot, the cathode is a metal. Metal gets hot, emits electrons. So we get our electrons emitted. So we have electrons being emitted here. Now, we need the electrons to get to the anode, so we accelerate them to the anode. So what we do is we, we put in an anode. Now, in this situation, okay, we pretty much call a hollow anode. So a, an anode is kind of a cylinder with a gap through the middle of it. Okay, we won't go into the, this, the physics of this too much, but we need to put in here that this is a high voltage. Okay. Okay. This is the negative, and this is the positive, and this is the an anode. We we'll call it a hollow anode. Okay. So what we have is, okay, let's go back. Okay. Film gets hot, heats the cathode, cathode is a metal, electrons are emitted, the electrons are accelerated to the hollow anode, okay, and they pass through the hollow, hollow anode, okay, or a percentage of them pass through the hollow anode. And then they need to be controlled after that. So we have what are called X and Y plates. We have Y plates here, which cause the the uh, beam, okay, the cathode rays or the beam of electrons, whichever we want to talk about it, to move up and down. And then try to do this in three dimensions. Okay, we have what are called the horizontal plates. So these are the vertical plates. 
And these are the horizontal plates. You need to kind of practice drawing this, as you can imagine. Okay, so the vertical plates cause the beam to go up and down, depending on whether you put a plus or minus charge on it. These are electric plates, the electric field. So think about it. If we have a plus charge here, we put a plus charge on this plate, the, electric, the beam, which we know is negatively charged, will be attracted up. If we put a plus charge down here, it will be attracted up. Okay, so we can move the beam up and down, and the horizontal plates allows it to move it back and forth. So basically, we can put the beam anywhere we want, and at the end, we have a screen. This is a fluorescent screen. So what happens is when the electrons hit the screen, okay, the uh, kinetic energy electrons are transverted into light energy and you get a flash, okay, or you get a, you get, you get a, a color, okay, light emitted. Okay, and that's it, right, that's it. Now we also, the electrons won't pass through here if, if there's air on the way, so we once again have our, all the way around this, okay, we have a, a glass tube, or we call it a glass tube, Okay, this time we're an envelope and we call this a vacuum, partial vacuum. Okay, so just to recap very quickly, okay, let's go through the steps, very straightforward. We need to make the electrons. We make the electrons by heating a filament which heats the cathode. Terminal commission of course the cathode, so electrons are emitted. We now need to accelerate the electrons, so the electrons get accelerated by the high voltage to the anode. They pass right through the anode, okay, it's called a focusing anode, we won't go into that detail. And then we have vertical and horizontal plates which can move the beam up and down or back and forth. You'll see that explained very well in one of the little clips, one of the little YouTube clips that you'll be looking at later after this, after this one. Okay. And when they hit the screen, they fluoresce. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's how a cathode ray tube operates. Okay. We look at the properties of cathode rays and x-rays, which are pretty much, or sorry, and our electrons, which are effectively the same since cathode rays are streams of electrons when we go through the notes uh, in, the next, in, in the next few minutes, okay? Right, so that's cathode ray tubes, cathode ray tubes. Now, X-ray tubes are really a special case of a cathode ray tube. So let's look how an X-ray tube works. Very similar at the beginning, as we'll see, okay? When you're practicing drawing these, I always suggest draw a cathode ray tube when you need to draw the X-ray tube, because it's, it starts off very similar, okay? So you have, you need to get electrons. So we get our filament, Again, now we spoke earlier about the filament in the cathode ray tube. We don't really need a cathode. This can be the cathode, okay? This can be the cathode for the other circuit in that this filament itself gets hot and it's metal, so it'll emit electrons. So electrons being emitted by this filament. We need to accelerate them to an anode. Now the anode is designed in this way. It looks a little bit different, but let's look at the, we'll look at the engineering that in a minute. But the important thing here is we have a very high voltage. Okay, very high voltage. Not a high voltage, a very high voltage from there to the anode. Okay, so this is the cathode. So a filament, and the filament is a cathode. Okay, that's the important negative. Okay, and this is the anode. Okay, and it's positive. Now, what happens is electrons are emitted. Okay, electrons are emitted from the thermionic emission here. They're accelerated very high voltages to here, but the kinetic, then they, they run into the anode and they stop. So they lose all the kinetic energy. So it, it, kinetic energy has to be transferred into other forms from the principle of conservation of energy. Turn into two forms. The first form is heat, mainly heat. So we need to deal with the heat. So how we deal with the heat is, we make the target tungsten. Okay, our tungsten has a very high melting point of 3000 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't melt very easily. So that's why we've talked in a high melting point because most of the kinetic energy electrons is converted into heat. Okay. We also need to move the heat away. So we basically, the rest of this is made out of copper. Tungsten is too expensive to make it out of tungsten. And we have some kind of cooling fluid or cooling fins here. Okay, we say cooling fluid, or cooling fins to to remove the remove the heat, to, and we the term used for that is dissipate the heat. So just remove the heat. Okay. Now, about one percent or less than one percent of the kinetic energy is converted into X rays. So we we'll, we we'll talk about the photo model. We say it converted into X ray photons. So we have electrons coming along here. Okay, and the X ray photons are emitted at ninety degrees like that. So we need them to get out because we're going to have all this encased in something in a minute. Okay, so we're going to have a window here. Now before we do all of that, let's put around all of this here. Okay, once again, the uh, glass tube. So 
okay and inside in the tube is a vacuum again once again same idea we don't want the electrons being um, we don't want the electrons being uh, stopped by the atom by the atoms of air okay so the electrons come in the photons go out through this window and what we need to have all around it then because electrons are very very dangerous okay so we put it right right around the outside just to avoid making the diagram worse than it is okay and that's a lead shield okay so the lead shield does that okay so that's it so you need to draw this as we go along we'll, we'll we will recap on it in the notes in a minute but let's go through the steps again okay filament okay low voltage filament gets hot filament is made of a metal thermionic emission of cores emission of electrons from the hot metal thermionic emission of cores very high voltage electrons are accelerated at very high speeds and therefore very high kinetic energies and they hammer into the target here there's a vacuum so the air doesn't get in the way they hit the target most of more than 99 percent of the of the kinetic energy that has been transferred because the electrons are now stopped okay of lost the kinetic energy is converted into heat so we've two engineering uh, factors that we have that we need to remember tungsten target very high melting point so it doesn't melt and cooling fins or cooling fluids, some way of taking the heat away from the X-ray tube. Less than 1%, but the important 1% is converting to X-ray photons, okay? And the X-ray photons are emitted effectively at 90 degrees like that, okay? And they pass through a window which allows X-rays to pass through. So we have a very narrow beam of X-rays heading out, so it's nice and safe. We encase the whole thing in lead to make sure that no uh, no other X-rays get out where we don't expect them to get out because X-rays are ionizing and ionizing causes uh, causes difficulties. Okay, so that's that's it. That's how the X-ray operates. Okay, X-ray tube operates. Okay, so when you look at the notes in a minute, you've been paid on the cathode rays, you've been paid on the X-rays, and properties of both. Uh, I think they're all the properties are reasonably straightforward. So we'll have a look at it very briefly in a minute, but I think uh, we don't need to go through it here. Now before we finish, okay, let's. Let's look, I should have shown you this earlier, but I'll show it now. Back to the cathode ray tube. Okay, so as I said, up to up to 10 years ago, every television, or 15 years ago, every television had a huge back on it. And that's why TVs were generally put into corners because the tube at the back uh, had, to be, had to fit somewhere. Okay, you couldn't hang them on walls. Okay, so this is an example of a okay, cathode ray tube. Okay, so this is a cathode ray tube. Now this was an old portable television. Okay, so this is your cathode ray tube. Okay, so you can see now suddenly there's a little television here and this, this is the, the depth of it. Okay, so let's go through the steps. Okay, so what we have is, okay, this gray bit is connected to the low voltage. So inside here, even though you can't really see it, okay, you have the filament. So the filament gets hot here. This is the basically the cathode ray tube part here, okay. So okay, the, uh, electric, there's a vacuum, okay, the electrons are emitted by the, the, the thermionic emission accelerated as a, 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 a anode here focusing anode here okay the uh, electrons pass through the anode and they come in here into this big cathode ray tube the cathode ray tube now what you should have here that's missing is on both sides of this and on top and bottom there was four coils and they are the x and y plates they cause the electric fields around here to cause the electrons to move up and down over and back the electrons hammered into the into, into the screen Okay, and when they hit the screen, they flashed. Okay, and they, depending on the color, okay, there, there was phosphorus here, we'll come into that later on, but they flashed. But that's your X-ray tube, that's an example. And that was a very small 14-inch uh, TV. Okay, nowadays, uh, the TVs are so, so much bigger. Okay, so TVs were not as portable back when I was your age, okay, than they are now. Okay, so that's your cathode tube, an X-ray tube. Have a look at the, the notes, uh, we'll tidy up the notes and have a look at the two, uh, we have two or three very nice short vid uh, video clips, have a look at those, and then I will be uh, giving you uh, some questions to do as well. Now I think what we'll do with the questions is, okay, uh, for the time being, if I give you a question tomorrow morning, Wednesday, okay, I will hope to have it back on Wednesday evening, but by the latest Thursday at noon, okay, so the following day at noon. All right, thanks a million, uh, see you tomorrow, bye-bye.